Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA Network Plus certification training course, the online training course where all of our photons are free of charge. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about common connector types, the connections that we'll see on the connectors of the network cables that we'll use. And we'll talk about these. They come from our section 2.2, these connector types of RJ11, RJ45, BNC, SCSTLC, whatever those are, and RS-232. Let's break them down and look at them individually. We'll start with RS-232. This is a term that you've probably heard used before because it has been around since 1969. It's one that's very standardized. It's called Recommended Standard 232. And you can see there are many different formats of RS-232. These 25-pin and 9-pin connections for RS-232 are generally the most common. Now this picture over here has a parallel port on it, and it has a VGA port, a video port on it. The serial port here that uses RS-232 is this 9-pin connection. So this can get a bit confusing, because you'll see a 25-pin connection here and a parallel port connection here that look exactly the same, but they're not. So you may have to check the documentation of the devices you're using or the cables you're using and see if they are RS-232 cables. This is a very common standard. You've seen it in use over many years for modem communication and slower speed communication serially between devices. It was really built to be able to send traffic that way with modems, but it, it soon expanded it because it was a standardized format to include printers, to include mice, and even to include some point-to-point -point networking that you could use between devices. Today we use it almost always as a configuration port. So if you have a router, a switch, some other type of device that needs to be configured in your environment, there is most often a serial port on it that you connect to and use RS-232 standard to be able to send traffic back and forth between your laptop and the device that you want to configure. Another network connector that's been around for quite some time is a BNC connector. This stands for Bayonet Neil Councilman. So that's a long term. That's probably why we always call it a BNC connector. It stands for Paul Neal, who is at Bell Labs, and Carl Councilman, who is at a company called Amphenol. And they came up with this connector type. It is a coax connector, so it fits onto an existing coax connection. And what's nice about it is it is a bayonet type connection, which means it pushes on and you turn it, and it locks on whenever you do that. It's very important when you're dealing with cables. You've probably kicked out cables from your computer before, so that type of connector was designed to connect on, twist on very easily, and be very secure in what it was doing. For 10Base2, which was an Ethernet topology, we used some cables that are called RG58 coax cables, and they used these BNC type connectors on them. So you'll see the BNC connection very common on those older style Ethernets. Unfortunately, they're very rigid and they're very bulky. And at the time, they were great for what they were doing, but we found that they would often pull loose, they would disconnect. They were fine connectors for what they were built for, uh, but for very wide spread use to use on hundreds or thousands of devices in an environment, it became very difficult because the connections could sometimes get loose or disconnect completely. And then for this type of connection, your entire network would go down. So that was a bit of a problem with BNC. We had to come up with other types of connectors. So we did. We came up with some called an RJ45. And you'll see both RJ45 and RJ11 cables depending on what you're doing. Generally, this RJ is called registered jack. We never call it registered jack, but that's where the name comes from. This refers to not only the jack itself, but the wiring pattern within the jack. Unfortunately, in the industry, we sort of generically say that if it's this 8-pin type of connector, it's RJ45, regardless of how it is wired internally. So you may see RJ45. You may have to double check what type of wiring is inside of that, because generically, we just call everything an RJ45, and we don't think about what's underneath the surface there. RJ11, the smaller, really has six connections here. We call it a 6P4C, which means there are six possible ports here that you could plug into. It's kind of hard to see them in here, but you could have six there, but only four are used. So those four conductors are usually used for what we call our modular telephone wiring. So your phones use a RJ11 connector and that wiring within them. A little different than the RJ45, which has an eight position, eight conductor 
Ethernet connection. There are eight positions here, eight copper connections across here, and eight conductors that are in use. We're using conductors in every single possible position. And you see this most often with Ethernet or some type of generic network cabling to plug things into. We'll see RJ45 extensively. They're a little bit different. You can see one's wider, the RJ45 a little bit wider than the RJ11. And if you're fumbling around, you're trying to plug into a device that might have both a modem and a network connection on here, you have to be very careful because sometimes you'll plug your telephone connection into an Ethernet port and you'll find that it doesn't work because you plugged it into the wrong connection on your system. Fiber network connections are varied. Uh, there are many different kinds of fiber connectors. One that goes back to one of the original types of fiber connectors in our enterprise type networks is something called ST, stands for straight tip. And that's what it is. You have this fiber sticking right out of this straight tip. And it has a bayonet type connector on it generally as well. You plug it in, you turn it, and it locks in place. Unfortunately, it took up a lot of room, and it was very easy to mix up which side was the transmit and which side was the receive. So we came up with these other types of connectors. They're called Siemen connectors based on the company Siemen. And we refer to those as SC connectors. They also can stand for subscriber connectors. They might also be called standard connectors, but it is SC. That's the important type. And you can see they even have this little locking clip that goes between them so that you could put in the right transmit receive, just plug it in. And you know if you unplugged it or you needed to move it around, you wouldn't mix up which side was the transmit and which side was the receive. However, the ST connector still took up a lot of real estate, relatively speaking, on these devices. So we came up with some smaller connectors called LC. These are from a company called Lucent. Lucent connectors, you may also hear them referred to as local connectors. Almost always, you'll just hear, I need an LC type connector. Uh, I had the same connection. Notice they are uh, very tightly wrapped. They are a pair that's connected to each other. And uh, they took up a lot less space than the ST or the SC connector. A very small connection type that we see these days is one called an MTRJ. Mechanical Transfer Register Jack. This type of MTRJ connection is probably one of the most common these days on newer equipment. And they take up a very small amount of real estate on our network connections, allow us to put a lot of different fiber connectors into a single piece of equipment. Well, let's review what we have found about connection types for our networks. Our first question is, which connector is most commonly seen in networking today? There's certainly one type that you'll see almost everywhere you go, and that's probably an RJ45 connection. It's seen in your home offices, in your small, your medium, and your enterprise networks around the world. Which communication connector was standardized in 1969? If we go back that far, there was one connector type that we knew came out of that time frame, and it is an RS-232, a standard connection that works perfectly well today as it did back in 1969. And finally, which type of connector was used in 10 base 2 thin net? There's a standardized connection type for those thin 10 base 2 Ethernet connections, and it was BNC. If you ever work with any 10 base 2, I'm very sorry, but also you'll know that you'll be using a 10 base 2 BNC connection on those devices. Well, that summarizes what we need to know about connector types. We've gone through our RJ11 and RJ45. We've talked about BNC. We've gone through this myriad of fiber connectors of SC, ST, and LC. And finally, we've gone back to 1969 with the RS-232 standardized connection. For many more Network Plus videos, to participate in our message boards or send me a message, you can visit our website, freenetworkplus.com.